So that's called mandatory break. <laughs> I actually went to Tim Hortons to see if I can get coffee. Lineup. <clears throat> Big lineup. Anyways, <clears throat> so as I mentioned, I created over here a cat called Pepper, and the Pepper, um, Pepper is referred by P. And also, there is a reference, animal reference, that is holding the reference of P, that is the pepper, too. Pardon me? I think I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. So, so when, I, when you run the program closely and you look at what's happening over here, uh, <clears throat> so the cat is created over here, it's absolutely no problem. So I have created, uh, creating pepper, the animal as a cat with nine lives. Now I'm creating Tom the cat. As you see, what is created is a cat, not an animal. But the address of that cat is kept in an animal pointer. So you have absolutely no access. So this is kind of useless when you think about it. You created a cat in an animal pointer. It doesn't even have a cat reference. And when you create an animal pointer, and when you have an animal pointer and you don't have a reference to cat, you can opcast it. It's impossible. It is possible, but we learned it in OP345, not now. But it is crazy because like, like that, you have no access to cat features anymore. It's just an animal, right? And the other one, P is a cat and it has access to cat, but I'm referring to it as an animal with animal reference. So if I run the program now, you will see that. If I run the program now, you will see that when a cat is referred to as animal, it's nothing but an animal. AR is a cat. And if I, again, use the exact same thing over here as animal pointer, you'll see that nothing happens. So I don't have any cat in here. What the heck? This is not, this is not good. There is a fix for that. Okay? So the fix is to fix a problem. Correct? There's a problem. We want to fix it. So the fix that I'm about to introduce to you is only for this problem. If the problem doesn't exist, that fix is irrelevant. I'm about to tell you how we can make sure that the latest version of a method is called in the hierarchy of inheritance, how to guarantee that. How to let compiler know, hey, please check and see if there is an upgrade to this act. I have a, an animal pointer pointing to a cat over there. I can actually tell to the compiler to say, look forward, see if there is a newer version of act and call that one. If I can do that, then it doesn't matter what type of pointer I'm pointing to the cat. If it's an animal, the latest version that is cats will be called. But if I have an animal pointer pointing to an animal, or if I have a cat pointer pointing to a cat, then this fix is irrelevant. Its existence doesn't make any difference. Do we understand this? Right? It's like if there is no flu in the world, let's say there is no sickness, the flu is gone. There is no more flu. If I take a flu shot, does it make any difference for me? No. It won't hurt me but it doesn't do anything, okay? If there is no sickness, having the, the medicine for it won't do anything. So that's the, so how do we fix that? It's very simple, actually. I'm just gonna show you the fix, and then I'm gonna bring the next project, that, the, the next, uh, uh, um, uh, what shall we call it, uh, set of, uh, the next, I'm gonna add the next project so you see how, it's how, how it, it is in action. Take a look. You see the animal over here? All I need to say over here is, uh, like, which one is it? Let's say I want to make the move to be the latest version. I, the code is the same. The only thing that I do over here, I say virtual. By going to, the, to a base class, setting a function to a virtual, 
you guarantee that no matter how it is called, the latest version will be called. Take a look. Now the move is virtual. I didn't do anything, right? When I run the program, see what happens. It comes right in here. I'm saying act. Act is not virtual. Because it's not virtual, it goes to animals act and it acts like an animal and it's done. Right? But when I actually go to move, because move is virtual, it picks the latest version that is cats. You see that? And sound bass go, goes to that. And the other one. Act is animal. Move is cat. And act as cat. So always, if you set a method to virtual and you have a parent's pointer or reference pointing to a child, then the latest version is called. If I have a virtual function and there is no inheritance, that virtuality means nothing. It doesn't harm anything. It doesn't fix anything. It's just sitting over there. That function is a regular function. Yes. Inside a cat, of course. Cat has two moves. One belongs to animal. The other one moves to, belongs to cat. When you are saying, I want the latest version to be called. Therefore, the cats will be called. At any moment that you create an instance of a derived class, any class that is inherited from another class, all the features of the parent resides inside the child. They may be dormant, but if you recall them, you can. I'll show you to the next one. So that was the virtuality that I showed you. So virtual functions, actually, if you go to an interview, remember C++ interview for your co-op, OK? They tell you what is a virtual function. Your immediate answer should be, it guarantees that the latest version of a function is called. Done. They know that you know what's going on. OK? And because of that fact, from today till the day you die, any destructor you create must be virtual. Because if it's not inherited, no harm. But if it is inherited, inherited, it guarantees the latest version of the destructor will be called. What does that mean? No memory leak. So at any moment, your, the syntax of a destructor, it's no more tilde name of the function. It's virtual tilde name of the function. Anything you create from now on, the menu, the menu doesn't have a destructor. Um, the other one that you're going to do soon, you're going to do the parking. OK, when you create the thing, even if there is no inheritance involved, you must make always the destructors virtual to guarantee that if inheritance is involved, and if the derived class is pointed or referred to by a parent, no memory leak is going to happen. So the example for it will be, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this back to normal, to what it was before. And bring back the, the next one. Nope. OK. Now, looking at this animal, as you see, we select to have, we choose to have the action and the sound to be virtual. The structure is always virtual, there's no question. Okay? Why well, move is not. Okay? So if I call the act or if I call the sound, no question asked, the cat sound or act will be called. Correct? What if I don't want that? What if the function is virtual, but I want to call the parents thing too? 
You can manually though. So now if I come over here and take a look at the cat's implementation, take a look. Not that cat, the CPP cat. See? In the sound of cat, I'm saying call the sound of animal. Let's actually do it after that. So I'm going to say say meow and then call the animals sound. As you see, it's not with a dot anymore. It's with a scope resolution. Because you are telling to the cat to go anim to the animal part of me. So it's a classes thing that you're calling. So you're, so you're saying, when we know that the sound of animal is virtual. So when the sound is, the latest version is called, add a meow and then do the sound of the animal. Got it? So you can still use the parents, you can still use the parents features and uh, just add functionalities to it. Or you can completely overwrite it, or you can completely overwrite it, have nothing to do with the parents' action. Are we good? Now if I run the program, you will see that. Oh, that's, <laughs> you will see that there are many things over there and we are really, okay, so let me just, first of all, let me st turn the, uh, turn the uh, uh, debugging to off so it doesn't show the constructors and all this stuff. Now, <clears throat> in here I have an animal, I have a cat, uh, and I have a cat pointer holding a cat, animal pointer holding a, uh, a cat, and a, an animal reference uh, holding a reference of a cat. So they're all there one by one being tested and if we go through it you will see that with an animal instance of, uh, of an animal with a reference of an animal, who cares? There is no inheritance involved. I don't care if something is virtual or not. Remember, whenever you have just one class by itself, no inheritance involved, who cares? Virtuality only gets activated if you have inheritance and pointer and reference of the parent pointing at a child. Okay, remember that. Otherwise, other than that, virtuality doesn't mean anything. So that's gonna act and a move and everything like an animal. Now in here I have a cat that's gonna act and a move and a sound like a cat. So there is no problem. These two, no virtuality involved. I have a cat pointing to a cat, animal pointing to an animal, virtuality, I don't care about it. But now in here, I'm saying, uh, in here too actually, this one, a cat pointer pointing as a cat, I don't care. Okay? But as soon as I go to the reference, as to the reference, then virtuality becomes activated. Act is virtual, the cat is called. Move is not virtual, the animals is called. Sound is virtual, then sound will be updated. Now virtuality is in effect. The same thing as pointers. So if I come over here, act, move, sound, they all work as virtuals. Move because it's not virtual, nothing happens, it remains the same. Deleting is very important. When I have a cat pointer killing a cat, obviously both destructors are caught, the cat and the animals. But if I go to the animal pointer and delete, and I did not do not make it virtual, which I did, then I need to don't need to worry about uh, because both are called because animals uh, uh, destructor is virtual. Are we okay with this? Yes. Yes, so what happens is that, again, if I have an animal, feline, cat, lion, if I have something like this, virtuality is transitive. If the animal has a virtual thing, the lions will be called. Okay? Now, if the virtuality comes halfway through, if I have animal, feline, cat, lion, and cat is virtual, 
then if I have a pointer of animal, cat, uh, lion will not be called. I have to come to the pointer of cat for virtuality to get activated. So at any moment in hierarchy of inheritance, you have virtuality, it shoots to the last one. But if it's halfway through, then you have to start from there. Are we good? Are we okay? All right. So essentially, this was the, uh, the end of what we talked about in the other class, too. And we are in next week now. So next week is the week that we were supposed to teach virtuals. Because this, this is so logical to go after, I believe waiting for a week to talk about this is not a good idea. It's better to know it now, and then we practice on it for two weeks, instead of just talking about inheritance, and then next week talking about virtuality. Now, the next uh, lecture, so next day you are coming in, we're not gonna, I mean the, um, well, I'm not going to teach any of these. So uh, it's going to be lab. We're going to work on it. You're going to start writing code, and I'm going to look at what you're doing. So uh, we're going to practice this. Remember I told you that we're going to practice? Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, and then the next session that you're going to come over here, we're going to talk about pure virtuality. I'm going to tell you what it is. And when we come, we're going to actually code it. So this is the last thing we are going to talk about now, and then we're going to go. When I talk about humans, we all agree that humans can talk, correct? In one way, correct? So we all agree that human has a method called talk or speak. Let's put it that way. Human has a method called speak. You should say human dot speak, and it should start talking. But can it? A human cannot talk. Even a Chinese human cannot talk. You have to mention what is the dialect. Is it Mandarin? Is it Cantonese? Right? You have to go to the end of the hierarchy to the point that you can actually tell what that, what that virtuality is. So we all agree that humans can, sp and can speak, but you cannot code that speaking until you get to the end to see if that person is speaking some dialect of Azerbaijanian, I don't know, or some dialect of Arabic. You cannot say what type of speaking is until you get to the point that you know exactly what it is so you can code it. Do we understand this? Or if I say a human, can a human give birth? Can it? Why? Isn't our ladies, aren't ladies human? See? So human can give birth, but we have to make sure to understand what kind of human we are talking about to have the action of give birth. Correct? Do we understand that? So these type of actions that you want them to be, but you cannot say, you cannot code it right now, you cannot define the exact situation right now, we call them pure virtual functions. You add a pure virtual function to a class, and you make the class abstract, which means that class cannot get instantiated anymore. If you are the best sculptor in the world, and I tell you, create a sculpture of a human being, you can't. Because you don't know if it's a female or a male. Correct? So that's what I'm talking about. So these classes definitely exist. I cannot say there is no human. Of course there is human. But the definition of human in order to exist must get completed. How do you complete an abstract class and make it a concrete class? You inherit it into a class and implement all their uh, pure virtual functions. And when you create all the pure virtual functions, then it becomes a concrete class. It becomes a female Chinese that speak Cantonese. And then you can actually say, speak because now they're going to speak, okay?
Apparently, Cantonese and Mandarin are not written in the same way, right? That's a, said, that's a crazy thing for me. It like blows my mind away. So, so, so if you go Chinese, you can actually say, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you cannot say speak. <laughs> so that's the thing. So <clears throat> now, and to finalize the lecture for next week without coding it, if a class that you have is only ideas, so essentially a pure virtual method is an idea, right? You don't still know how you're supposed to do it. You know it must be done, but you don't know what, how. That's an idea, right? So if you have ideas, if all you have are ideas, if you have a class that does not have a regular method at all, all its methods are pure virtual. So essentially, you're writing a wish list. I want a class that can do this and that and that and that, and I don't know any of them. That's called an interface. An interface is a class, a wannabe class, a class that just tells you that these things must be done so you can create something like me. Done. That's the next week's lecture. We just don't know how to, co how to code it. But you, again, I wanted to talk about you with you, so so you know what they are. So when the time comes, then we know. That's and and those classes are called interfaces. Um, interfaces in uh, C they don't have any implementation, which means you you don't have the keyword interface. You create a class, you make everything pure virtual. You say this is an interface. It doesn't make any difference. It's the same thing as an as an abstract based class. So, on, so again, interview note. If you go to, a, to an interview and somebody tells you what is an abstract-based class, your answer is that a class that at least has one pure virtual method, a class that has an incomplete method in it and cannot get instantiated, that's an abstract-based class. What is a concrete class? A concrete class is a class that has everything implemented. It has no pure virtual methods in it. Ta-da. Okay, if you do Java, you actually have something called interface. They actually call the class interface. But that's another story, another subject. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? No? All right. Time to go home. Before going, I want to come to my, oh, just a second. Let me stop.